exactly all over again. Short engines squared off with the nose, cutouts where the wings join the fuselage, and two new features, the sweep back of the wings and that definite oval shape of the tailplane. And as she flies away, remember cutouts at wing roots, oval tailplane, short engines in line with the nose, and Heinkel's your uncle. With six movable machine guns, a bomb load of eight 500 pounders, a speed of 274, and a crew of five or six, this is the largest bomber Jerry has in normal use. Although many have been shot down by the RAF, Jerry still has a fair number of Heinkel 111. Now for the Dorniers. Here is the DO-17Z, sometimes known as the 215, and the latest of that particular brand of bomber. Now the first thing you'll spot with this one is that the plane has a bulbous nose. So had the JU-88, but she had a single tail fin, whereas this one, exactly. So remember, bulbous nose and double tail fin makes it the DO-17Z. There's the bulbous nose and double tail fin again. And you can just start to spot other points of recognition. The way the engines appear to be slung under the wings, an effect caused by the high wing construction of the Dornier, and the way the wings flow into the fuselage, as if they'd been smoothed round into it. Remember also the long slim lines of the fuselage, which gave to its predecessor the nickname Flying Pencil. This is yet another unmistakable mark of the Dornier. No doubt about it now, is there? Or is there? Although this was taken from above the plane, the outline remains the same. The long, slim body, the bulbous nose, the rounded off wing roots. And here are a couple of new things. That lead of the nose in front of the engines, and the short wings with rounded tips. DO-17Z, all right. Like the Heinkel, the DO-17Z has six movable machine guns and a bomb load of ten 100-pounders. With a speed of up to 290, this is the long-range reconnaissance bomber of the Luftwaffe. Hello! Something's in the wind. She's off on a reconnaissance flight over enemy territory. Let's follow the fortunes of such an expedition and see what may result. Fitted with special cameras with high-powered lenses, which are placed in position in the fuselage, their job in a proposed attack or invasion is to fly high over enemy territory, photographing in series the area where attack is intended. When the photographs are finally assembled and oriented, they will form a mosaic of the whole area, giving up its secrets in the way of troop concentrations, defended works, aerodromes and so on. Back comes the DO-17Z with its valuable load of information. And an expert staff stands by to receive the film pack, rush it to the developing apparatus, and thence to the illuminated panel, where the transparent positives are examined minutely against a light. Here then is the product of those high-powered lenses which probed your secrets from that plane in the sky you thought too high, perhaps, or too unworthy of your attention. The plot thickens. Word goes out, and the bombers shedding their cloaks of invisibility prepare for the first round. High altitude bombing to disrupt communications, destroy aerodromes, break up troop concentrations, and create confusion in our midst. There goes the DO-17Z with the bulbous nose and the double tail fins, in his role as bomber this time. See those short round-tipped wings and long slim lines, DO-17Z. And here comes the Heinkel 111.
There's that well-known unbroken line on top of fuselage. And the gun position under the center. And now those cutouts at wing roots. Hankel 111. Last off, here's the Ju-88 with its bulbous nose and its single tail fin. And despite its smaller size, with a bomb load equal to the Heinkel. Long engines in line with the nose, JU-88. There then goes the first round to prepare the way before the fighters and dive bombers sail in. <laughs> 